Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast. If you are a new listener, thank you so much for tuning in today. I wanted to let my listeners know that I have a sweet little offering, um, something called Owning Your Femininity, Four Steps to Embodying Your Sensual Self. And you can find that at margaretromero.com forward slash gift. And I would love, love, love if you have been enjoying these interviews, if you could leave me a review in iTunes, that would so warm my heart. So today's guest is Allison Braun. She is a business and success mentor that helps soul-driven women get what they want by being who they are and doing what they love with simplicity and pleasure. I so had to have her on the podcast because what she does, her magic is that she is able to bring in and show women how to embody some form of sensual energy into their businesses, which I absolutely love. So we get into how women can find pleasure and still have a very successful business. We also get a glimpse into her sacred rituals and her some of her morning routine that we can all learn from to try to bring more of that sensual feminine energy into our businesses. So I really, really hope you enjoy this interview. So many nuggets in here. I really think you'll just love it. And on to the show. Today's guest is Allison Braun. She is a business and lifestyle success coach. So I am so happy to have you on the show. How are you, Allison? (laughs) I am. I'm awesome. So happy to be here. Oh, so good. So good. Now, from another friend of mine, I heard about you and learned a little about how you work as a coach and was so fascinated by this because It's something that I feel it's not really taught. And what you do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you infuse sort of this like sensualness into women's business. Is that right? Yes, I I would say that's pretty accurate. (laughs) Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Tell me how that started for you. Oh, man, it's been such such a journey. I was reflecting actually this morning on some of the different stages <laughs> that I've been through to get to get to here and I think you're right. Like it's not something that's uh, that's really taught and and it's something that I consider to be has always kind of been a natural kind of gift or talent or mm-hmm. knack that I've had. My background is in holistic health, and so I've always had a really holistic view of of life, of health, of business, of everything um, integrating together. And as I was doing doing that work, um, which also in- incorporated some energy work, uh, I love energy, and that's you know spirituality. Energy is something that I integrate a lot as well. Um, but when I was doing that work, I realized something was missing. And, and therefore things weren't really flowing. 
And I realized once I actually realized it, cause it was very much like <laughs> something's missing and I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I realized after the fact that I was, I was suppressing an aspect of who I was. I wasn't really fully expressing um, my sensual sexual side in my work. And, and as I, I started to embrace that, <laughs> I was reflected, um, by a group of, of mastermind partners that, that my business should be as the bedroom joyologist. Cause I was so great at helping women just feel really safe, expressing themselves and tapping into their desires and mm. releasing a lot of guilt and shame around being a, a, a naturally innately sexual being, which I think we all are. Yeah. And as I started doing that work, I started to see how much of a connection there was between women suppressing that and feeling disconnected from their purpose. And so eventually after a couple of years, I transitioned into um, doing business coaching because I, I naturally was just attracting a ton of women who wanted help getting connected to their purpose. Cause that was such a big part of my journey and getting their business going. And now it's kind of come full circle where I get to help women with all the things that I love, you know, sexuality, sensuality, femininity, business, strategy, mm. health, relationships, it, because it all, in my opinion, um, you know, coming back to that, that holistic view of things, like it's all, none of it is separate. It's all essential. I love that. I so love that. So when this started for you, since you, you said it was sort of like a natural inclination for you to sort of embody that, which we all embody that. Some just have more of a demonstration of it in their lives. So you began as, as, a, as a coach before any of this started. Did you start out as a regular coach without the focus of bringing in that sensual piece? I tried. <laughs> I, I had, um, I had just gotten my life coaching certification. Actually, this was after I had gotten my degree in natural health and, and had practiced energy work. So I was like, Oh, maybe life coaching is like the missing piece. I thought that was the missing piece. And after completing the certification, I was like, Oh, I guess I should get uh, a coach or a mentor of my own since I'm advocating for other people getting a life coach. And so I started on my mission of, of finding that support and, and then I stumbled upon, and at that point, by the way, I should say that sisterhood and, and being around women was not a a comfort (laughs) for me. I I was much more comfortable being around guys Mm -hmm. and expressing myself around men. Mm -hmm. And so I found, I found a coach and, uh, and she hosted a mastermind similar to what I host now and it was in that group of women that a lot really shifted for me. Mm. So I, I kind of, I guess to answer your question a little bit more specifically, I had, I was in the stages of creating offerings and packages for life coaching, quote unquote. But my deep desire was to have a niche, to have a very specific focus that I knew that I could do best and serve others with best. And so that's why I think I, I felt the need to first receive that support before just like putting it out there. Okay, got it. So now you have um, something called a sexified success series. Um, but do you, is this the mastermind? This is not the mastermind you have. So actually, I just I just did this this week. Um, the sexified success series is um, a series of training. Um, there's two two live calls that I do that talk about uncovering your secret business fantasies and how to integrate pleasure and inspiration and passion into our work more for increased Mm -hmm. flow and productivity. And, and that naturally feeds into the sexified success circle, which is the, the offering, the main offering in my business that I have to, to serve women. And how do you, how do you start? How do you begin? Or actually, what are some of the ways that women can sort of start infusing this if they're entrepreneurs, if they're starting a business, or even if they've been in business for some time now. Um, Because I know that when a woman is in her, 
you know, she's, let's say, ha- um, has coaching calls or clients throughout the day, or she's hosting a workshop, or she's planning what her offerings are going to be for the year. She's definitely in her masculine energy all day. And, and that's very common. And, and we need to be because that's how we get shit done. <laughs> um, but how are you like, give me a couple of ways that women can start incorporating some of this beautiful, sensual, feminine energy into their business life. Because I, you know, I teach women how to bring it into their daily life, like their regular daily living, maybe when they get home from work or during lunch. Um, but as an entrepreneur, and, and for myself, I, I do practice feminine, th- I, I'm able to sort of flow in and, and out in between masculine and feminine throughout the day. And even from how I have my desk set up at home to what I'm doing at the office to how much time I'm spending with my patients, how much downtime I have in between them. So what are some things that you teach that women listening can maybe start applying to their own business lives? Mm. Yeah, there's there's definitely a wide variety. And, and each person... I mean, there's a lot of commonalities that I see that are really helpful, but I think it's also important to note that self-expression <clears throat> and really understanding who you are as an individual, as a woman, um, can be really helpful in identifying the things that are going to serve you most. Mm-hmm. And there also has to be a desire. I, <laughs> being in the the like business entrepreneurial realm, I know a lot of women who they thrive off of the hustle. They love the hustle. And, and for me to go in and be like, do these things, they'd be like, screw you, Allison. Like, no, I love this. And, and I think that's because they, they receive a lot of pleasure in doing it the way that they're doing it. So that's not necessarily disserving them where it becomes a a challenge. I think is when women are feeling obligated or, shooting like oh this is this is the only way I can be successful this is the only way um, I can make it work this is how I have to do things and so the first thing that I find really really helpful for those who are starting to feel that desire to like make a shift is is permission Mm. like just just obviously we have to give that permission to ourselves but sometimes even before that can happen it means getting permission from someone else. And that can come in the form of seeing someone else doing it differently. So for me, it's really important to surround myself with a variety of different women who are doing things differently, doing things the way that I want to do it, doing things (laughs) differently than how I want it so that I am constantly getting that clarity for myself and also the permission to just do things the way that I want to do them. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And, and to even add on to that a little bit, not only permission, but having, having an example of how things can be done in the way that you deeply, truly want it. Because I think a lot of women do believe, uh, especially in the work field, if I, if I don't keep working so hard, if I don't do it the way that everyone else is doing it, I'm going to, I'm going to lose momentum. I'm not going to be as successful. I'm going to like fall behind. Like I'm just, I'm going to lose everything that I've worked so hard for. And so I think it's important to surround ourselves with people who, who are working from that place of flow, who are working from that place of pleasure, who are um, being examples of how productive you can be when you're in that state. Because I believe that pleasure is like the most productive thing. Oh, absolutely. But I will also say that it is hard to find a woman in her pleasure and, <laughs> and being able to infuse that into her daily life, especially into her business world. I'd say, I mean, <laughs> seriously, I, I don't, I'm, I'll, in my inner circle of women, friends, and colleagues, yes, um, a lot of them, I would have to say, uh, some, but not not a lot of people are as so I'm like very um like it's a part of my life and it 
it's it's become so infused in my life that I don't know of any other way to live. And mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah, that goes for you as well. Mm-hmm. There, there is no other way. <laughs> there is point. no other way. Now, the problem with women who you were just describing as who are, you know, total badasses in their business and they're like crushing it. Um, I don't even like using that word. It's such a masculine word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I end up seeing is the, um, the after effects. Yeah. You put your body through working like that day in and day out. Guess what? Adrenal fatigue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Your hair is going to start falling out. Guess what? It wrinkles, white hair, aging, low drop. Yeah, I mean, your libido's dropping, um, mood swings, hot flashes. I mean, you name it. it it's not pretty. <laughs> And they come to me with all of these lists of symptoms that they're having. And and it is because of an ongoing, unending cycle of just needing to crush it and being in their masculine energy all day. Now, yes, of course, I agree you need to be in that energy in order to, to get shit done th- throughout the day. And in your business, especially if you're you know, a CEO of a company and whatnot, but, and also mothers, of course, right? I mean, you're mm-hmm. taking care of your kids 24 seven. How can you find some time to take some respite, some downtime for just you, whether that's a bath, a walk in nature, 10 minutes, just like give yourself a little breathing room, a little space. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I I think that the more, you know, individuals like us are giving examples and permission to other women to sort of embrace this feminine energy because actually it is quite powerful. Mm-hmm. Manifestation, <laughs> it's not, attraction, it's, yeah, it's that. Our intuition, I mean, mm-hmm. talk about the strongest thing a woman has mm-hmm. to own is her intuition. And so really embracing that. Mm-hmm. It'll it'll do not only wonders for your health, but long your longevity, your vitality, so many things. So okay, so sorry. Um, continue, please. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, most of the women that I tend to attract are are the women who they they don't want to work really hard. Like they're the lifestyle focused, freedom focused. They feel like they have to, but they don't really want to, Mm. (laughs) which is, I mean, that's where, because I can totally relate to that. So those are the women that I tend to attract and and for both them and for the ones who are just naturally like driven and have overworking tendencies. I find what I've been really working with is looking at because you kind of have to speak to where they're at, right? Like we want productivity, we want success, we want financial flow. And, and so I have to kind of speak to that. So I'm like, okay, speak, touching back to that, like intuition piece, most people are looking at creating goals from a societal should. Okay. So this is what everyone else is around me is doing. So this is what my goal should be. Here's my goal. Here's all the, the step by step process to reach that goal. Right. And then halfway through, they were so burnt out or overwhelmed that they're like, I don't even want that anymore. Yeah, this or sucks. Or if they, yeah, yeah <laughs> empty, empty, empty success and I'm too burnt out to even enjoy the process. Or if they do reach that goal, it's unfulfilling because they didn't even want it in the first place. They just mm. thought it should. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so what I'm trying to transition women into starting to understand is if you can come from a feminine place to clarify and and receive what that goal is meant to be what that calling is meant to be and then infuse pleasure into the process of of discerning what those action steps can be to to reach that that stepping stone that goal whatever you want to call it that desire then then you can receive guidance along the way through that pleasure on what those action steps should be that way, because what most people are doing is they're working eight to 10 hours a day doing everything. What I do is I play, pleasure, receive the information. Um, for me, that often looks like you know intuition, connecting to source, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I get the the download on what the action step should be. I go do that action step in 30 minutes to an hour and I get the exact same result as someone who worked for eight to 10 hours. Mm. And then I just get to go have fun the rest of the brilliant. day. Brilliant. It's brilliant. So, <laughs> I mean, if results are the focus, there's another way. And I think it's really, really important for women to start to, and men too, actually. I, I've been witnessing a lot of men that are also hungry for this. Mm. Like, there's another way. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you, you just sit on your ass all day and don't do anything and, like, right. pray. Right, right. <laughs> you need the, the masculine to take you action do. on the guidance. Absolutely. But if you can tap into the feminine first, use the masculine to guide you and, like, take that momentum from the guidance you're given, weave pleasure in, then the whole journey can be enjoyable. So whether or not you reach the quote-unquote goal – you're growing, you're expanding, you're enjoying the journey. And in my opinion, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that may disagree, but in my opinion, it's all about enjoying the journey. That's the whole point. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So do, I'm sure you get, do you get a lot of opposition, you know, in your coaching calls or in your, during your mastermind of women who are like, I don't know why I have to do that. I mean, it just, it's a waste of time or do you, do you get that? A not a lot of, not a lot of, um, not a lot of opposition. I do get some, the, the re resistance that I tend to most see is like, I know I want to do this. I know I should do this. And yet my, my ego and my patterning is so deeply ingrained in having to keep working that it's mm. like, I, you know, when I want to go have that bath or when I want to go for that walk, I'm like, Oh, I'm in, I'm just going to tune and numb out and watch TV or I'm going to sit at my computer and work for another two hours. So it's almost like a more of a habitual resistance mm. rather than like, I don't, or there's like a kind of a subconscious, like I don't necessarily believe that that's true. Like I want right. to believe that I can do less <laughs> and get more, but like really, <laughs> I don't know. Do you find so the, the things that I tend to see? Yeah. Do you find that there is a level of feeling of unworthiness that women may have when there is resistance, like they are not worthy of that downtime, that bath mm. or that massage? Oh, heck yeah. Even, yeah. even for myself, like I am some, I'm one of, we both are probably some of the exceptions where this is like a slightly more natural inclination for us. And yet I still, like even in the last couple months, as I've been up leveling to new levels of success in my business, there's still moments where it's like, can I really let it be easier? Like, can I really, can I really ask for more if I'm not going to work harder? So I, I personally still experience mm. those layers of like, am I really worthy of having more? Am I really, right. like, I feel kind of guilty sometimes because I didn't, I wasn't available 24 seven for this person or so I think that guilt and shame or, or do I really deserve this? Am I really worthy of this if I'm not working my ass off? And so when you <laughs> yeah. feel that little bit of resistance for yourself, when you're going through it, another level, uh, hitting another level of greatness, I guess you could say, there's a little resistance like, okay, how do you, what do you do to sort of get out of that or flow out of that? I, I have been working with, I, I love writing. So lots of journaling on just like kind of processing through those thoughts first and foremost, just seeing what shows up. And I've been doing a little bit of tapping okay. on, on those things that come up. That's been a newer thing that I've been working with and really, really finding helpful and enjoyable. Um, I get back in touch with my body. I work with a lot of oils, um, essential oils, mm. which is a really nice kind of sensual practice. So yeah. I'll usually do like some, some self massage with oils based on like kind of intuitively picking them on whatever blocks or beliefs are showing up. Mm -hmm. And then for me personally, I have to really remind myself that this is showing up because I'm being called to step into a greater place of trust and surrender a greater place of of being an example and if and I have to really remind myself and this goes to any of us that are pr 
proponents for joy or happiness or feeling light or, you know, any of those positive things that people are wanting to experience, if we're not experiencing those ourselves, we're getting out of integrity and out of alignment. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a, it's doing a disservice by me not stepping more and more into that, even though there's like that resistance there. Right. Exactly. I mean, for you stepping into that and, and on, on the things that you do to help combat that resistance, it's also when you do it, you sort of give others and all of us permission to also step into our greatness even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I love that. So tell us a little bit about some of the, you know, I was, I was checking you out on Instagram and I love that you um, have some kind of sacred practices, and I'd love to know what some of them are. Yeah, yeah. Um, based on our, our quick conversation before we hopped on, too, I think that there's probably a lot of similarities here. I, I recently created a little um, meditation tent, which is basically like a grown-up fort, and Ooh. I'm... <laughs> I'm big on, I'm like really big on sensuality and, and and textures in particular, textures and and smells. So in my meditation tent, I have a whole bunch of different textures. Like I got velvet pillows and, and fabric. I've got like these fur rugs, Mm. silk scarves. I've got all these textures that just like make me feel very rich and luxurious. And I love that. Are you a Taurus? Are you a Taurus? I'm not. I'm a Pisces. Oh. Yeah. I'm all water. <laughs> and do you know what your moon or rising is? Uh, Virgo, I believe. Okay. What if there's a Taurus element in there? This is very Taurusy. Your fur, mm-hmm. your sensuality. I'm a Taurus. It's my sun sign. I'm a Pisces moon. Um, mm. So also the dreamy, the romantic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like the dreamy romantic strategic. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now let's plan for it. Yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> uh, I've also been, I've been lighting a lot of candles lately because I am, you know, speaking of astrology, because I am pretty much all water, um, that fire, that passion, pleasure, very easy for me. Passion, not so much. So mm. I've been actively working um, with connecting to and, and learning about different fire goddesses and and utilizing fire in my sacred space. And even right now, I've got a couple of candles burning in front of me just to, to remind myself and to represent that burning of the embers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been really cool. And I work a lot with crystals. My dad, <laughs> when me and my sister were really young, my dad used to... Uh, we would get two dollars allowance, and we would go to the rock shop. So I'd spend my allowance on rocks, <laughs> and That's so I so really, cool. <laughs> yeah, best best ever. And so I work a lot with stones and crystals. So in my around my space, I've got a lot of stones and crystals, some card decks. Um, I create altars with my stones. So I kind of I'm not. I really love ritual, but I also like a lot of. Um, freedom. So I'm not really hardcore on a lot of processes uh, like I used to be. Mm -hmm. And now I'm kind of like, oh, like today I feel like applying this oil, this oil and this oil on these spots. And I feel like putting uh, um, this crystal on my necklace. So some adornment and adornment is is really fun for me because most of my necklaces (laughs) have crystals in them or on them. Oh, nice. And and movement. Um, I really. I used to be a go-go dancer. Actually, I haven't really oh, shared wow. that with many people, but I love dancing. So um, really moving my hips. What uh, kind of dancing do you do at home? Are you. Is it what kind of playlist? I like. My husband's actually a DJ, um, so he's got oh, a wealth cool. of music. Unfortunately, I, don't tell him I said this. Unfortunately, he. He mostly likes to make techno, which is not my favorite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but luckily, I won't tell him. <laughs> luckily, he weaves in a lot of stuff that I do like. So I like, mm-hmm. I like really deep, um, kind of bassy music, like the stuff that um, 
has like a little bit more tribal feel or or even a little bit more like I don't know hip hoppy um but yeah I like a lot of different stuff sometimes I'm in like a more flowy mood uh sometimes I like things a little bit dirtier (laughs) yeah yeah totally so I don't know. T- tell us a little bit about, um, because I love all of these things. You're right. I do and have all of these things that you were talking about. The, the I like candles. You probably have incense, um, altars, crystals, um, the cards. Do you mean either tarot or oracle? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, walk me through like a typical maybe morning for you. Mm, okay. <laughs> like from the minute you wake up. You'll you'll totally see the, the Virgo Pisces mix here. So okay. I get up, I press snooze probably three times. In the meantime, like in between snoozes, I'm like kind of rolling around and like getting into those sweet spots in the bed, mm. feeling the sheets on my skin. My husband has been getting up usually earlier than I do. So, but when he's not, you know, there'll be some cuddling that happens. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get up and I, what I have been doing lately is going straight to, straight to my office slash meditation tent room and I'll pick out the oils that I feel like I want to work with based on what I've got going on that day and what I want to feel that day. So I'll I'll usually pick out like three to five different oils and, and then I will apply them very slowly usually Mm. kind of massaging them in and just really tuning into their energy and my intention for the day I may I may pull out my journal and just kind of write a little bit you know writing about what I dreamt about or what happened last night or things that I woke up thinking about and then I might light a candle um for my altar right now I've got one um, that's holding the the energy of the women in the sexified success circle who who I haven't met yet so I'll I'll light a candle for them and I'll get dressed put on a song while I like kind of get dressed get ready brush my teeth I don't like showering in the morning that's kind of I don't know I like showering at night so I can really take my time Mm -hmm. so I'll Mm -hmm. like get ready And then usually what I do is get out of the house. Um, So I'll go to a coffee shop. I really love espresso. And I'll take my journal. And I'll usually just do some free writing morning pages and or just get down to get down to work after really connecting into my body and and what my intention is. So that's that's my morning flow. And I'll, I'll usually eat breakfast when I'm at the coffee shop. Oh, okay. Okay. So you always leave the home in order to do work. Um, you don't really chill at home to do work from home? Not a lot. I, some, my home is feeling more and more me and cozy. And, you know, I've got my diffusers and crystals in different spots now. And yeah. I've, I've really taken the time to uh, decorate and adorn it how I really want it. Mm. But I still find like it's kind of too quiet and it's really, it's really easy for me to flow into like, oh, like I'll just have a little nap or like, oh, <laughs> I'll watch, I'll watch an episode of this and I can get too cozy really quick. And I like, because I work, I do have my own business and work from home sometimes. And most of my clients are around the world, so I'm, I'm not connecting with them in person a lot and I travel a lot. So for me, I find I get a lot of inspiration and connection from being at like a medium busy coffee shop where there's other people creating and writing. That's like so pleasurable for me. Yeah. Yeah. I just get into the flow way more. Totally. And tell me a little bit about some of the oils you use. I'm so intrigued. I I, I use essential oils as well. And Mm. it also does change up every day depending (laughs) on my mood or hmm, what do I want to use today? Or what am I calling in? Or what intention am I setting? So tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, everyone laughs at me when I'm traveling because I literally have a suitcase full of essential oils and crystals. Because I'm like, (laughs) I never know what I'm going to feel like. 
Oh, um, I travel with them too. And on, <laughs> they have to be in my carry-on because I need right? to have access while I'm sitting on the plane. Security my always oils, loves that. They stop you? Sometimes, yeah. Oh, my God. No, they yeah. haven't stopped me about that. Or my crystals. Um, <laughs> I only travel with, like, the smaller ones. So, mm-hmm. Because God, I wouldn't want to – I don't travel with anything that I love, love, love just in case it, it falls or it gets lost or something. So I yeah, usually I know. just – I know what you mean. It's like, oh, just in case. I don't know. Exactly. Well, right now in my diffuser beside me, I've got three different oils that I've been kind of obsessed with with the holiday season. Um, I've got white fur mixed Ooh. with bergamot and cassia. So bergamot's really good for confidence and self-expression. White fur is kind of like that little bit more grounded masculine and cassia is like the the spice, right? That's the mm-hmm. you know the creative, passionate um, pleasure. That smells so good. Um, so that's what I've got diffusing. And this morning I applied. What ones did I apply? Uh, Arbor vitae on the bottoms of my feet. Arbor vitae is like the tree of life. Um, so really grounding. And I put passion. It's a a passion blend on on my sacral chakra area and then there's a motivate blend that I put on my solar plexus and a peace blend that I put on the front and the back of my neck which when they talk about it they share more about how it's like you know peaceful reassuring but I actually find that based on the description of the oils in it it's really great for self-expression which is my constant area of growth so um Mm. i find one really helpful for self-expression and speaking and and communicating and then um, right beside me i've got a rose a rose water spray that i made with um pure rose oil it's really intense um so that's a little heart chakra opening I love it. How did you make the rose oil spray? What did you mix the oil with? Just with water, actually, which I know isn't typical, but because I go through it, it's not like a big bottle and I go through it pretty quick. It it does the trick. Which company of essential oils do you typically enjoy? Uh, doTERRA. Oh, okay. The the main, pretty much all of my oils are doTERRA now. Okay. Okay. I use, um, I've been using Young Living for a long time and I know doTERRA is like, um, the also very similar yeah very similar very well known great quality yeah, I, used, I used young living for about 10 years so they're they're awesome do you find that there's a, a difference i mean i i don't know whoever's listening um well <laughs> you know i'm there's some I'm reason young someone needs to hear this <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i use young living and i'm just used to those blends which is why i never switched over to jutera but since you have more experience of switching tell me do you find that they're the blends were different you, you connected with them more for Jutera? yeah there's there's several reasons why i switched i really really love the the emotional blends through doTERRA those are the ones like you know the peace passion motivate um there's several others um so those are the ones that i use pretty much every day I just, the frequency of them feels very, very high to me. Very, I mean, there's not a huge difference quality-wise, in my opinion, between the two. Right. Um, I mostly switched, you know, from a more business perspective. Yeah. um, Because I really, I wanted an additional wealth stream. And (laughs) with Young Living, I hadn't made anything. And within a couple months of doTERRA, I had a really solid additional um, well stream nice. so that was just a fun pleasurable integration that's really yeah. the only reason great 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 um okay so we talked about your oils and so what about now so you talk a lot about bringing sort of this beautiful sensual side into your business practice um how do you practice sensually are you how does how does that show up for you how are you embodying it throughout your day? Mm, lots. Uh, for me, 
um, my growth around sensuality has had a lot to do with um, tapping in more spiritually. <clears throat> so slowing down, breathing, doing some energy work before hopping on my calls with clients or doing an interview or anything like basically before doing anything, <laughs> doing some energy work. Uh, I'm, I'm curating my space. So I'm making sure my space feels really good wherever I am, coffee shop or at home. Yeah, I love it. And, and then, like you said, it, it's like, it's a lifestyle. So making sure that I'm just coming from a place of feeling good as much as possible. I'm doing things that are fun and pleasurable to me, whether that's, you know, making some jewelry or going for a walk in nature, dancing, having fun with my husband, eating dessert, <laughs> like just really making sure that I'm doing the things that I really want to do and not denying those things that make me feel really good. Mm. And what about, um, are you, do you do a lot of sensual dance at home? Quite a bit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you do. Okay. And is that something you like on a daily basis or just when you're feeling um, a pull to do it or when, when does that happen at night before bed or, It's a great question. I find it kind of goes in spurts and lately it's, it feels very present because I've been dancing a lot lately. I am, because I'm launching SSC, I find it even more important than ever to make sure that I'm doing things that feel really, really good. Um, so I've been dancing probably three times a day, Oh, not for necessarily a really long time, you know, right. Right. In the morning when I'm putting on my makeup, I've got some of my favorite songs on. So it's like dance makeup, dance makeup. <laughs> right. And then in the afternoon, I'll usually take a couple minute break. And in the evening, I, I've either been doing a mix because my husband's been going to bed really early and I'm, I'm more of a night owl. Um, after he goes to bed, I'll usually do, do some more dancing in the evening, just like more slow, sensual dancing. Or I'll go to the gym which is not slow and sensual, but it's more um, high energy. So Mm -hmm. just kind of whatever I feel like I I need. If I feel like I need a little bit more release, I'll go to the gym. And if I feel like I just need to slow down a little bit more, I'll just uh, dance at home. So it's been been fairly frequently lately. Nice. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I also do a lot of sensual movement. I've mentioned this throughout my podcasts and it's definitely like a part of me. It just, I don't know. It, there's just something about it that on a good day on a bad day on an emotional day on a sad day, whatever it is that I'm going through, it always feels so good. Mm. It's just slowing down. And for me, and sometimes it's, it's dancing with some really good music and for me that would be like hip-hop old school that's kind of what the music I grew (laughs) up on (laughs) so I love that and I love the energy of that and I can definitely get into that and there are some days where where, and actually probably once a day at least I do some sensual movement practice and especially when there is some form of emotion that's writing in me and I'm like oh like you know you just it's just sitting there Mm -hmm. and so in order for me to move through moving that move that through my body I centrally move and and it does Mm. it 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 completely like I just feel so good and balanced after that it's really amazing oh yeah I know exactly what you're talking about a couple of my clients um do ecstatic dance and and another one does oh yoga. So I just the experience and the like a good playlist as well can yeah. do wonders as far as like taking you through that journey of emotions mm-hmm. and releasing. Oh, so powerful. So true. Now you did mention something about energy work. And this is something that I have been it's been in my life for like at least 16 years and I did all kinds of trainings way back in the day Reiki and energy healing and chakra balancing and all of that stuff so I'd love to know what some of yours are and and what do you mean when you do some energy work 
Mm. Good clarifying question. <laughs> I could relate. I, I've been practicing Reiki. Reiki is my, really my only like formal training um, for about 10, 11, maybe even 12 years. And eventually I tend to learn things so that I can let go of the structure of it. So now I, I usually will, for example, um, since we're kind of talking about work as well, um, let's say I'm about to sit down for a client call. What my quote unquote energy work looks like is I'll start taking a couple deep breaths and just really let myself, you know, ground in, sink into my energy. And then I'll do uh, what might seem like a prayer. So, and I usually say the same thing over and over again. So it's kind of like a trigger to, to put me in a certain state. And, and basically just <clears throat> asking that I receive whatever guidance that I need, or, you know, bringing our spiritual team on board and, and that our time together be for the highest good of both of us. We both get exactly what we need. And, and so that's like a, a really quick process that I do. But otherwise, um, just kind of on the day to day, it might look like tapping, it might look like just laying down and moving energy, it might look like um, sexual energy work. Um, I work with several different healers as well. So sometimes they bring in different practices. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of variety, but I kind of, in my experience, energy is energy. So I just kind of I've been getting a lot better with trusting my intuition and just kind of going where, where I'm guided. And right. I don't necessarily have a lot of words to explain, explain what that looks like. Um, going back to what you said about sexual energy, do you work with the jade egg or anything like that? Every once in a while, I have a, a rose egg, actually, or rose quartz. Yeah, me too. Egg that I really, really like. Yeah. I don't use it a lot, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tend to just do um, Kegel flexes and mm -hmm. and work with that. But every once in a while, especially around my moon time, I might work with a stone. Okay, okay. Do you do any moon rituals at all? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my husband always laughs at me because it takes me about half an hour to haul all my crystals outside during a full moon, as I'm sure <laughs> you can relate. <laughs> yes. So what is so, that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just put my crystals outside. This last time, I, I live in the middle of Canada right now. So this time they all froze to my table overnight. Oh, um, no. But I'll, <laughs> it was kind of funny. So I'll, I'll usually like set them up in a particular way that I feel inspired to. And if there's anything that I want to release, I'll write it down. I might burn it. <clears throat> That's a pretty not regular practice that I'll do. And, and a lot of movement, especially on full moons. And then on new moons, which we just had, um, I, I haven't been doing as much on new moons, if I'm being really honest, but I'll usually take a time to just daydream on new moons mm -hmm. and and write out uh, new desires that are popping up and sometimes really looking at who I need to be to to be in alignment with that desire. Those are the two like most common like basic practices that I'll do. Mm. Beautiful. And on your retreats, do you do you practice any of these rituals with your ladies? All of them. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. My my clients are often a lot more. At least now, a lot of my clients do are healers in in some form, and so often their gifts are a lot more heightened than mine. And so we do a lot. We do a lot of ceremony, a lot of ritual. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's really, it blows my mind every time. I never know what's going to happen. So you're introducing um, crystals and uh, probably maybe oracle cards or city and circle, mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. Yeah, Yeah, we usually have a pile of about 10 different card decks uh, in our like main space and candles and crystals and 
Um, mm. We sit in circle and yeah, there, there's been, just been so many different things that have come up and that we've been guided to do in retreat. And it's usually pretty all encompassing. The last time we even made our own goddess sprays, everyone named what their, their own was with essential oil. So that was really, really fun. Oh, that's cool. That's really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Well, as we are wrapping up today's call, which I absolutely loved, um, are there any last things that maybe we missed or I didn't ask you that you'd like the listeners to know? Hmm. If, if anything sinks in, I would love for it to be that pleasure is productive and that you are worthy of of experiencing your desires without burning yourself out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Totally possible. Mm -hmm. So I've got three last quick questions that I ask Mm. all of my interviewees. Um, Let's see. First one is what is currently at your bedside? At my bedside. Um, I don't even know what's on my bedside. I think there's probably about two essential oils, uh, some body butter, and probably a glass of water. (laughs) Okay, nice. And what is your biggest indulgence? Mm. That's a great question. Probably either espresso or dessert of any form. Like. I'm okay. the person that would love to eat dessert before my meals. Are you into chocolate? Oh, yeah. I'm very picky about my chocolate. It's got to be like really great chocolate or, or like good raw cacao or ganache. Mm. Mm. So good. So good. And what do you wear to bed? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, my mom was just asking, like, what size of pajamas do you wear for, like, Christmas? I'm like, uh, no pajamas. I don't like pajamas. I don't even remember the last time I wore pajamas. <laughs> what did she, did she say anything about that? She's like, well, tell me anyway, because it's for all of us to wear at the same time. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Basically, she was saying you can't come naked to our Christmas party is what she was right. saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mm. funny because the last person I just interviewed also, that was her exact answer as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how can people find you? Tell us where, where can they find you? What upcoming events do you have going on? Mm. I am, I mean, all of my main stuff is on my website, which is just alisonbraun.com. Uh, Allison with two L's. That's a, a common typo. So I've got two L's in my name. And, and I spend quite a bit of time connecting with people on Facebook. So you can find me on Facebook in my free group, which is called the Soulful Success Tribe. I have a business page as well, which is um, the business joyologist dash Allison Braun. So either of those two places you can connect with me. The group is a little bit more conversational. And, and right now I'm really excited. Uh, earlier we mentioned the sexified success series, so you can still um, receive free access to that training, which is all about uncovering your secret business fantasies and stepping more into pleasure and flow in your business. Uh, mm. and that's at, uh, www.sexifiedsuccesscircle.com. And, and through that, I do introduce the sexified success circle, which is my main, my big mama jamma offering. It's like my heart's, my heart's greatest gift. Mm. And it's a, a sisterhood, a mastermind, a circle, a mentorship program for 10 soulful business women who, who want to experience more pleasure and more success without working harder and this year we just so happened to be going to Bali. So I'm. Oh my God, amazing. When, is, <laughs> when does this start? It starts in January, um, mid January it starts. So okay. the group will be forming over the next couple of weeks. And, and then we, it includes one on one coaching, masterminding every month. Uh, you get an accountability pod. 
There's all kinds of little extra bonuses to support you in the journey. Um, and then, of course, um, some virtual retreats and the retreat in Bali. So it's a very um, holistic offering of mine <laughs> that includes several different touch points. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, there's infinite possibilities that happen in this container. So it's, it's something very, very magical. Sounds amazing. How long is the mastermind? Is it a year long or? It's 10 months. Ten so it months. goes to the end of October. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will put all of that information in the show notes. And um, if anyone's interested, feel free to reach out to Allison. It's Allison Braun, A L L I S O N B R A U N dot com. And check out her mastermind. It sounds awesome. Yeah. I'd love to hear, hear your takeaways from the show. So I hope that you'll find me on Facebook and, and say hello. Absolutely. Well, Allison, thank you so much. It has been such a beautiful conversation, you know, for women to not only own their feminine, which is, I am on a mission to help women um, discover that, um, but to also own it in the business world, which is totally possible, which I, so I just love the work that you're doing. Keep rocking it, girl. Mm. And until next time, I'm sure our paths will meet again. Yeah. Thanks so much, Margaret. Thanks for holding this space. Thank you so much for listening to learn more about Alison Braun and for all the show notes, you can find it at margaretromero.com forward slash episode eight. And to continue the conversation, please join our Facebook group at margaretromero.com forward slash Facebook. See you next week.